So the last thing that I shared was more the fear, more you share. Maybe fear is an indicator that it's time for you to share. All right, caution, a little bit of a caution. Nothing I'm saying here is the truth. My role is that of a coach. And the coach's job is to make the player win. Make the player give his or her best. Coach is never committed to telling the truth. Coach will come and say something quietly in your ear and you go and give your best performance. What the coach said in the ear may not be true, but it got the job done. Okay? So I'm not, I just want you to know that whatever I'm saying over here is not necessarily the truth. We've tested it out. It works. At the same time, if you challenge me to say, is that the truth? Sorry, I'm withdrawing. I will not defend it as the truth. I can only offer it as something that works. Okay? So play with it. Be clear that it's not the truth. Take it as anything other, anything other than openings for experiments and most importantly for your own empowerment. Okay? If it works for you, if it empowers you, use it. Let it use you. If it doesn't empower you, change your coach, drop me, take somebody else. I'm interested in you winning. Okay? That, I'm, that I should be your coach? No, absolutely not. If my coaching doesn't work for you, that's fine. But do you need a coach? Yes. Any great player on any mission needs a coach. They have a set of advisors. They have a person who's listening to you day in and day out, following you to see if you are doing what you said you would do and remind you of what you, what, what you said you had done. And I'll tell you about another human phenomena in the next few minutes. Okay, so you ready? I'm assuming you're ready to start some experiments by now. This is a flight experiment. Okay, so these are the tickets, ticket details. Review one journal paper in your area of interest. Prepare five slides to communicate the essence of the paper. Prepare one slide with a question for a quiz to the audience with four options A, B, C, and D. Total five minutes. Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's not five minutes. That is four minutes, 55 seconds. I apologize. My mistake. I can't change that rule on you. The rule is four minutes, 55 seconds. All right, plus minus five seconds but 4 minutes 55 seconds, okay? And please bring the PPT or PDF file on a pen drive, okay, for today's class and be ready to present, okay? And we also had said that any of these not followed would mean an invalid ticket. So one volunteer will now be called to present their talk. One person will now be called to present. So I'm going to now look to see who's willing to share, who's willing to make their presentation. All right, that is... Walchand Institute, excellent. And now who is volunteering? Uh, Professor Chaudekar, he is volunteer. Okay, excellent, excellent. So thank you very much for volunteering. But I have to deal with something right now. How many people are not ready with the PPT? Let me ask differently. How many people are ready with the PPT? Okay, excellent. How many people are not ready with the PPT? Oh, so the people who are not ready with the PPT are not in the room, I think. <laughs> that could be the case. But fabulous. Congratulations, okay? Congratulations. Thank you. So can you please hold on? I'll come back to you, Walchan. I'll come back to you. Let me go to another center and come back. So who would like to volunteer? She's a volunteer. I'm very happy to see you again. Now I hand it over to my partner. I'm ready with the PPT presentation. Excellent. Hey, you know, I just wanted to know that I really appreciate the work. Uh, that you have done and you know all the people in all the centers uh, who have uh, you know I gave you it, it was very short notice I gave it to you on Thursday night and for you to be uh, Thursday morning and for you to be ready for ready with it this morning I just want you to know that I appreciate the effort it takes to do the work and I want to thank you for it okay so can I give you a big clap for everybody big clap okay thank you very much okay all right now some of you have done the work and some of you have not done the work. Yes? We all have done the PPT. Excellent, excellent. All right, and has everybody followed the instructions? Has everybody done the timing for 4 minutes 55 seconds? No, ah, that we found ah, difficult. Ah. <laughs> all right, so you know, uh, you, got, you got the PPT done, you got 5 slides, okay, but you didn't practice, you didn't practice, so no, no valid ticket. No problem, this is a game, it's a game, right? Okay, good. Now, not like in a bad way, okay? But you want to know that, uh, you know, when, I, when the instructions for the ticket, okay, what is a valid ticket, those are the essential elements 
for you to prepare for a talk. So my invitation is to keep practicing all those elements. Any one element missing and there will be some weakness in the presentation. Tell me back, what are you hearing? What did I just say? All the elements should be met. All the criteria should be met while we prepare the PPT. That is what you said. And we have to practice for it. Excellent. So it's like a, it's like a template or it's like a guideline so that each one. So let me just actually go over it. So can I go to the slides? Okay, I'm going to show you the slides again. In this slide, let me just go over it. When you review one journal paper in your area of interest, you're really doing it inside of a commitment to serve other people. Because when you review the journal paper, you spend two hours on it. And in five minutes and five slides, you can actually contribute. You can actually share that with someone such that they can get an appreciation of that paper. They spend only five minutes with you. Whereas you have done two, three hours of work. And if there is more than one person that you give this presentation to, then that many people will get benefited of two hours of work in five minutes. And I think somewhere in the video uh, recording, I've also said that suppose you set up a group of five, six people, each one of you puts in one, or one and a half to two hours in a week on one particular paper, get together once in a, one hour in a week, and each one of you in five minutes share about that paper, six people would have studied six papers in a matter of two hours, because two hours that you practice and then one hour. And of course, you're having a cup of tea when you're getting together. The first bullet that I was going to say is actually about service. You want to stand in a place of service. It's a distinction service. Second is about how to be five slides. Now, what? there's nothing sacred about the five slides. It's just a game we made up. Sometimes people will just take one slide and say everything there is to say. But you know, you give five slides so that if there are some graphs to be shown, if there are some tables to be shown, then you can include them. For five minutes, if you can hold the attention of an audience using five slides, that's it. That's more than adequate. Otherwise, you will be overloading them with a lot of uh, you know, information and a lot of details. But the mind is working a particular way. The human brain is working a particular way. You got to allow that to work. It's not about you. It's not about what you have to say. It's about them to receive it. So the game is different. If they get it, then you succeeded. If they didn't get it, you didn't succeed. OK. Uh, the quiz question is actually, the, the third one is really designed so that you can put yourself in a position where what is the most important thing about this particular paper that you would like your audience to be able to appreciate. OK. And you turn that into a question. If they can answer that question, they got that appreciation. And then once you got that question in place, the five slides are all being spoken, all being presented, all being shared, so as for the audience to get appreciation for that particular question. So when you put up this, they'll say, yeah, OK, that's what it is. It just gives a structure. You can play it differently. This is the way that I found works very well. So I'm just sharing the way I do it. And you can invent your own ways to do it, actually. OK, five minutes is really so as to be able for you to practice. Very critical, OK? Five minutes means five minutes. Now, let me say it slightly differently, OK? If you were a surgeon, if you were a surgeon, and a particular procedure required three minutes of time, and you didn't do it in three minutes, you took six minutes. Those additional three minutes means life and death for that person on the surgery table. OK? So three minutes means three minutes. And I can't overemphasize this. It's a matter of practice, OK? It's a matter of practice. Um, they say timing is everything, and I don't know what that really means. But for Sachin Tendulkar to play a stroke, timing is everything. OK, for Messi to score a goal after the, you know, tackling you know, the right point, right place, when he actually hits the ball, it's timing. For surgery, it's timing. And I told you in the beginning of the previous session that what we are up to here is brain surgery. So brain surgery, that minutes is actually, the resolution is now in seconds. So four minutes, 55 seconds. I'll give you plus minus five seconds. If you finish five minutes early, good. If you finish five seconds late, good. Anything beyond that, there's damage to the brain. It's an invitation. It's a game to play. Okay, I'm inviting you to practice. All right, PPT. 
um, because typically that's what we do. The reason why I said PPT and not PPTX is because you need to know what the system is. One time I went to the ministry, I was, you know, um, I just started my career. Not that I'm not arrogant now, but I was even more so, more arrogant then. Uh, this was about 15 years ago. And uh, I walked in there with my, you know, PowerPoint presentation, all ready to, you know, enlighten these uh, big people in the ministry who didn't know, you know, all about my research and how important that research. You understand, right, my arrogance? Okay, so <laughs> I'm, I'm going there uh, with this PowerPoint presentation, and uh, they try and upload it. It is on the latest software which we at IIT have. MNRE had not caught up to the latest software yet. Guess what? I couldn't show my presentation because the version didn't match. Okay, so you've got to be very clear that when you're going, even now, for example, one of the things I've been working with Sajjanji is, will we be able to get PowerPoint presentations to be done from there? We still, you know, kind of, there's, there's a technical issue, especially in a, a large group like this and so many centers. You know, one small uh, pause, one small breakdown, and then, you know, we can't complete the exercise. I believe, I believe there are some, uh, some 11 centers uh, which, we, for some reason, have not been able to get technical, we've not been able to get audio communication for the last four or five days. There's a list of 11 centers like that, okay? So, am I able to contribute to these 11 centers? I don't know. So, therefore, it's important. You are accountable. You are accountable for making sure that technically, the version of your PPT or your presentation, the version of the system that they have, whatever, all the technical details, your, it's your accountability as a presenter. One time, one Nobel laureate had come, Rowland, Professor Rowland. He had come to our center uh, to give a talk. And grand old man, I think must have been in his mid-70s, mid late 70s somewhere. And he came to give a presentation. And uh, it, was, it was just beautiful because uh, when he walked into our center, uh, all the students and the faculty had lined up uh, as, a, uh, as a corridor. And he walked in through that uh, passage of human beings. And he was very overwhelmed because he'd never experienced an, uh, a welcome like that. And then as he came out of that, uh, 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 that entire procession, so to say, he came there and he, the first thing he asked me, I was organizing that event. So he asked me, uh, is my PowerPoint loaded? Uh, is it working? And he didn't want to have a cup of tea. He didn't want, he said, can I go up and see for myself if it is working? Okay. I mean, a person of that stature, a person of that age, okay, his concern is that every minute, every second that I spend with the audience should be honoring the audience. I don't want to end up in a technical glitch that will then have a problem and I'll not be able to serve the audience. I mean, I just, you know, I, I, I saw that and I was so inspired and so blown away by that kind of a commitment. And after all of that stuff was done, you know, we got it handled, uh, he actually sat down and had a cup of tea with us, you know. And all was in good time, not a problem. Uh, but that's the kind of you know, detail that he actually went into. Okay? So I'm inviting you. That particular uh, line over there is like a requirement for a ticket. Yes, it is a requirement for a ticket. You need to be able to do that. You, need to, you want to be able to do that. Okay? All right. And be ready to present. I don't have to share that with you. Uh, but you know, you've got to be dressed appropriately. You know, I normally don't wear a jacket. I don't wear this jacket for class. Okay? Uh, at some point in time, I also used to feel that Wearing a jacket is like you don't want to show off. No, no. I'm here to honor you. If I'm here to honor you, I will wear a jacket. Because for me, in a way, when I'm dressed up like that, I'm here to honor you. Okay? So you've got to keep, and you know, it's not appropriate for me to wear this uh, when I'm going for a workshop in which you have to roll up your sleeves. When I'm going to the lab, I can't wear this jacket and go. Actually, I have to wear my jeans and kids and protective gloves and protective glasses because I'm in a lab. So you've got to be appropriate, the dress code has to be appropriate to the occasion. If I'm going to uh, meet with you know, somebody in the ministry, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm representing my institute. It's not me, it's not, the, you know, it's not the personal self that's going. I'm going there as a representative of IIT Bombay. I need to carry myself in a way in which the moment I arrive, they know somebody has arrived from IIT Bombay. And you know, they should be able to look and say, that person is from IIT Bombay. This is not to show off, okay? This is just to honor the people you're going to be meeting and have your institute be represented. Enough said. I think you're convinced. Okay, good. All right, and then that's it. So that's all I wanted to show there. I'm going to take on a next.
a, a, a small conversation, which I think is very important, OK? Some of you do not have a valid ticket. And it's not because you don't have a PPT. It's not that because you don't, didn't practice. Uh, some of you just didn't do it, or didn't do it in a way in which it would honor the agreement that we have about getting trained. So you just didn't do it. Now, this is not intended to make you feel bad. This is not intended to uh, make you wrong for not doing it. But at the same time, I would miss, I would, I would not be doing my duty if I stepped over it. I have to actually engage to see how humanity comes in the way of our own commitments. Okay? So I'm just going to share a little bit about that. So some of you don't have a valid, some of you just didn't do the work. And you know what? Most of the people who are present today, I have a gut, see, gut feeling that they've done the work. Some of you may not have, but you know, I appreciate that you're here so that we can have this conversation. And some people who have not done the work, maybe they haven't come today. Okay? So a lot of times, if a student is not coming to the class, it's probably they didn't do the work that you had asked them to do. So the question then is, am I going to punish them by giving them a bad grade? Am I going to punish them for not coming to class? Am I going to set a tough question so that they can fail in the exam? Those are the doing, those are the doables we can do to punish. Human beings like to punish. You didn't do a good job, so I should punish you. Enough, I think we have to retire that whole business of punishment. I think we are in a whole new world, a whole new reality, a whole new life, a whole new paradigm, where we are looking at honoring what it is to be human. Punishment is now over. War really should be over. We are still dealing with it. I just got an email this morning. I was so moved. This is a student from, I think, maybe about two years, three years ago in one of the courses I teach, ES200. It's a, it's a required course on environmental science and engineering, environmental studies. And uh, he's in Delhi, and he just sends me an email, uh, in which basically, maybe I'll read it to you. Okay, let me just read it to you. Dear sir, I graduated from IIT Bombay in 2005 and was lucky enough to attend your course on environmental studies. I hope you're doing well. I live in Delhi and the increasing pollution is a grave concern for me. I have personally invested in low polluting vehicles, CNG, and use it for my daily commute. The recent Delhi government decision on banning vehicles on alternate days has got, has got me thinking. I'm, thinking, I'm looking for pointers, answers to the following question, and I'm looking for your guidance. Number one, what are the key sources of PM2.5 pollutants in Delhi? What are the key vehicle types which emit PM2.5 pollutants? I'd be grateful if you could point me to any studies around this. Look forward to your guidance. Thanks and regards. Can we zoom in on this? Okay. All right, good, thank you. All right, and you know, then uh, I was very inspired by it, so I sent a message to three, four of my colleagues. Uh, I, can, I can probably mention their names. Uh, uh, Professor Harish Fuleria, who's my colleague here. Professor Rashmi Patil, who's my colleague here. Uh, Professor Dr. Rakesh Kumar, who is, uh, heads the Neri Zonal Lab uh, here in uh, IIT, but also an adjunct faculty and uh, Dr. Ajay Deshpande, uh, who used to be with us in the uh, faculty. Uh, he, so four of us have been in some way uh, on, a, on this mission for air quality in India. So I wrote to them, uh, this is the email I wrote to them. I said, please see the email. The IITB soldiers are beginning to take up their rightful positions in asking the questions. It's taken 10 years. You know what? Right place, right time. This is the time for him to ask the questions he's asking. Okay, so that's what I want to invite you to. But if I don't address the issue of people not having done the work, then I would be sidestepping or overstepping or not addressing what needs to be addressed in our own humanity. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do now over the next two, three slides. Okay, so some of you may not have a valid ticket. So here's the thing, okay. You came to get trained, but some reasons. And usually reasons are good reasons. So you came to get trained, but some good reasons are there, which will not let you get trained. There were some reasons why the homework didn't get done. There were some reasons why the ticket didn't get prepared. 
And all of those would be good reasons. I don't have a problem. They're valid reasons. But like we said, one of the things that comes in the way of us as human beings in keeping our mission or being alive is fear. Fear is one of the reasons, by the way. Till you judge that something else is more important than the fear. Till 